I'm Jim Desario, Professor of Photographic Imaging at Suffolk County Community College, Brentwood, New York. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate dry mounting. Uh, and I'm going to do kind of a quick and dirty demo. It's not everything you always wanted to know about dry mounting. Um, this is equipment dependent, uh, and we need a couple of basic pieces of equipment. There are really five that I'm going to use and I'm going to demo. Two of them are absolutely necessary. The other couple you can kind of improvise. Uh, the, the basic piece of equipment is the dry mount press. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and the second basic thing, and you really do need it, uh, is a tacking iron. Um, and uh, these are uh, uh, sources of heat, and the process is a heat and time process, and that's typical of a lot of photographic processes. So let me get right to it, and we're going to see what we can do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is start off with a photograph, and I've got one here. Um, and uh, we need some uh, pieces of uh, supply, so we've got mat board, uh, and we've got dry mount tissue. Uh, dry mount tissue comes in a lot of different types, uh, three basic types. Uh, I'm going to use one that's called uh, one. It's made by a company called Image Maker, and this is designed for both resin-coated Aussie photos and also uh, fiber-based photos. Uh, you, if you're working with fiber, you can buy just a uh, tissue that is fiber-based uh, and will work only with fiber-based. If you're working with resin-coated, you can buy a resin-coated only tissue. Uh, but since we do a variety of things here, I'm going to use the one. Uh, kind of one size fits all tissue. And it's the same size, this is 8 by 10, uh, the photograph is 8 by 10, uh, and that works out real nicely. And the first thing I have to do is I have to adhere the tissue to the photograph. Uh, and I have to do this in a very specific uh, place and manner, uh, and I'm going to demo that uh, right now. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, is place the, uh, the photograph face down on a clean surface. I'm going to use the mat board right now. Uh, and I'm going to use the tacking iron. This, is, uh, uh, this particular one does not have a thermostat. If it did, I would set it for high. Uh, but this one is just kind of one temperature fits all, and that's okay with me. Uh, so I've got the iron here, and you notice the iron has uh, a, a shape to it. It has kind of a pointy uh, front end. It's known as the toe. Uh, I'm going to touch just the toe of the iron to the center um, of the tissue, which is on top of the photograph. Uh, I'm going to make a little O. Uh, some people prefer X, so you could do X's or O's. Uh, and I'm going to just do it a little bit like that. I don't want to press too hard because it could be a problem if I don't press um, uh, firmly enough, it won't stick. And the way to tell is if I can lift it gently. Uh, and that uh, means that it's adhered enough. If I've pushed too hard, there would be a dent or, or melt spot right in the middle. And there's no problem with the middle, so we're good to go. Uh, so the first step was to adhere the tissue to the photograph, and I've done that. Uh, the next step really is to trim the borders. I if there's any excess tissue, you would trim it at this time. Uh, you, you might also make a decision whether you want to do border or border less. I, I don't recommend doing a whole lot of cropping. That's something you would do in the darkroom or in Photoshop. Uh, you know, you don't want to end up with a postage size, uh, a, a stamp size uh, a photograph. Uh, but I think this might look better with uh, uh, the edges trimmed off as a borderless. Uh, so now I'm going to demo one of the optional uh, uh, tools, and this is a rotary uh, uh, paper trimmer. Uh, and this will work with all sorts of paper. It does not work with mat board. Um, and if you don't have the piece of equipment, you can use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife or anything that will give you a nice clean cut. Um, th this tool will work, will cut in either direction. Uh, and I like to always cut pushing things away from me rather than toward me. Uh, and I'm going to slide the photograph face up so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, under, there's a blue guard rail kind of thing. Uh, and I'm gonna, it goes under this translucent to blue. Um, and it gets firmed up against this fence. This is a raised um, uh, piece of metal designed for this purpose. Uh, and it's, that's what's going to make this perpendicular. You want a nice right angle cut. Um, so I'm going to do that. And the way you can tell are you cutting enough or not enough, anything that sticks off the edge of the plate and of the trimmer is going to be removed. And you can always cut a little bit more. Of course, you can't cut less. So I'm going to trim just a tiny bit uh, just to uh, demonstrate a little bit. So you can use this to make fine and even much finer uh, cuts. But I'm, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to remove the border so that we have a, a borderless 
um, uh, photograph. Uh, so I'm pushing this gently against the fence. I'm holding it so it doesn't wiggle around. That's what's going to keep it nice and perpendicular. Uh, I'm going to make a nice easy cut like that. Uh, I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. I'm going to put the cut edge against the fence. Uh, I'm letting the, the part with the white border stick out over the edge so it will be removed. I'm going to turn it again at a right angle. I'm gonna, the recently cut edge is just up uh, against the fence. Uh, and I'm going to turn it one more time. Uh, and that'll be our final cut. Okay. Um, so we, we started with the 8x10 with borders. We ended up borderless. Uh, now we have to adhere this to the, to the uh, mat board. Um, and we're going to have to uh, determine which side. Uh, this particular one has good side, both black and white, so I could do either. It looks a little oppressive on the black. Uh, it looks a little better on the white. Uh, if you want to uh, kind of do a quick comparison, we can just kind of go back and forth. I, I think it looks better on white, so I'm going to adhere this to white. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate using this particular tool. It's called a Falcon, is the brand name, print positioner. Um, it's a T-square with numbers on it. And this is like the most unintuitive thing I know. So you really just have to kind of blindly follow the directions. Um, if this does come with a set of directions, and you can read those, what I'm going to demo is exactly what they say. Uh, and it works fine. Uh, there are. Uh, uh, two different scales of numbers. There's one a scale up top that runs horizontally, and it, it looks a little different. It's got zero uh, through five and zero through five in two different directions, which makes it a little odd. Uh, and then it has a, 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 a vertical scale in large font and a vertical scale in small font. So these different numbers make it look complicated, but the use of it is actually very easy, though non-intuitive. Uh, so I'm going to show you how that works right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to start with this, and it's just a couple of quick steps. Um, I'm, I'm going to flush the photograph with the top edge of the board and the right side. Uh, and then I'm going to use this T-square, it's a print positioner, uh, but I'm, I'm going to slide this across like this. Um, and I want to line this up so that from zero to the edge of the picture is the same number as from zero to the edge of the board. That's what's going to eventually center this left to right. Uh, now you could just use a regular ruler and measure and position it. Uh, this is faster. Not the first time you do it because it's not intuitive, but it's faster when you learn how to use it. Uh, and that this particular thing is going to line up. It just happens to be these numbers at one and three quarter inches. So from zero to the edge of the picture is one and three quarters. From zero to the edge of the board is one and three quarters. So now that I've got it positioned uh, left to right, that's going to center it left to right. I hold this down firmly um, and I slide the, the photo over so that it, 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 it leans right against the edge of that T-square print positioner and then I slide it all the way to the bottom edge. And now what I do is I just read the large font vertical number. So I got one, two, three, four and a half. Now I slide this up to one, two, three, four and a half. Okay. Now, this is going to center it left to right, okay, and it leaves 15% more at the bottom than the top. That's a museum and gallery standard. It's not necessary for you to do it that way. You can just use uh, uh, numbers and measure it and get it exactly centered, but it's a standard, and I'll demonstrate the standard way to do it. Uh, and now that I've got this position, um, I have to keep this nice and steady. Uh, and I peel up one corner of the photograph, and I'm going to use the tacking iron again on its toe. Uh, and this time I'm going to touch just the tissue. Uh, so the tissue is, is separated from the photo because it's not adhered except in the center. Uh, and I'm going to go right in the corner. Now I can press down a little more firmly here, a little hard, because there's no photo under it. There's only draw, uh, there's the tissue, and under the tissue is the uh, board. Uh, the board won't damage. Uh, so this is kind of a key thing, though. I've attached it in one corner only. And the reason for that uh, is that it's going to go in the press. The press is going to squash it. If I attach it in two or three corners, and I didn't get it absolutely absolutely flat, and I'll exaggerate a little here, it, it's going to put a tremendous wrinkle and crease it, and it'll, it'll be a mess, it'll be all mangled. So one corner, and that's enough to keep it from wiggling around. 
Uh, and, it, and that's all you need right now. Now it's got to go into the press. This manufacturer of tissue recommends 170 degrees. I've set the press for 200 degrees because I'm using a, a, another supply that I'm going to uh, tell you about in a minute. And this is hot in here uh, and I'm going to be careful. I'm going to poke at it. Uh, uh, and what I'm using here is this stuff called release board. Uh, it also comes a much thinner version, release paper. Uh, I like the board better. And I've got two sheets of it. Um, and this is part of the supplies that you could buy uh, easily. Uh, and I'm going to put this face up on top of one of these release boards. And this is kind of like a mat board, but it's got like a wax coating so that any glue that maybe oozes out uh, won't get on uh, the board or the plate of the press and then the next photograph. So I'm just making a sandwich here. I got two of these things. And because it's got to go through um, the thickness of that release board, that's why I had to adjust this a little higher than the manufacturer recommends. And this is a time temperature thing. I've got a timer. That's also an optional thing. You can just use your cell phone or whatever as long as you have seconds. So what I found that works best for me is 45 seconds at 200 degrees. So I've got 200 degrees. I've got that set for 45. The press goes down, and you have to give it a good hard push, uh, and then I'm going to turn the timer on, we're going to run it for 45 seconds. Um, and one of the things that's nice about uh, dry mounting your photos is it, it really helps preserve them. They're not going to get wrinkles, they're not going to get bent corners. You know, you take your photo, you throw it into the drawer, and then six months later, you know, you want to frame it and it's all bent and it looks uh, ratty. Uh, so this is one way, uh, and it's a good, clean, uh, quick, easy way uh, to keep things nice and neat. Uh, and they tend to last for many years this way, uh, without damage. Uh, and again, there are those uh, three different types of tissue. Uh, you, have, you have to ma uh, match the tissue type uh, to the type of photograph. There's uh, the resin-coated RC only, there's FB, fiber base only, and then there's the one type that fits both. Uh, and that's the one that I've got now. That's the 45 seconds. We're going to open this up. This is hot in here. Uh, sometimes it falls down, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to poke it. Uh, and notice I'm keeping my hands out of there. Uh, uh, and this should be all set to go. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flex this a little bit. Uh, and, I'm, and that's just to make sure that it is adhered. It, if it didn't adhere right, it would start peeling up. So it seems to be perfectly fine. And what I recommend is that this cool under some pressure. Uh, so we're going to put some extra weight on it. Uh, maybe I could do this too. Uh, and uh, it takes just maybe two minutes to cool. And uh, when it's cool, this should be glued pretty much forever. Uh, you won't have ding corners, you won't have wrinkles, uh, you're good to go. Uh, and this would, would make a real nice uh, uh, work of art. You could put it uh, in a standard frame. We used 11 by 14 uh, uh, board. Uh, this could go right into an 11 by 14 frame. It looked like a real piece of art.